Today we're going to demonstrate to you the SEG15D, an HF single sideband transceiver developed in East Germany for the Stasi, the secret police that they used to have. This one is still new, was never used, and uh, we're going to unpack it and show you what it can do. Right here it's unpacked. You see the transceiver unit itself. As you can see it has a manual antenna tuner. The frequency is set by decade switches. It runs from 1.6 to 12 megahertz in 1 kilohertz steps. And it does have a VFO to get in between the uh, 1 kilohertz steps. Uh, this is tune mode this is uh, low power, high power, high power is 20 watts, low power is uh, I think about 4 or 5 watts. Uh, we can do uh, I think single sideband upper and lower and AM equivalent and CW. Volume, here we can hook up headphones, microphone and a speaker. And this is the uh, ID plate. Zende Empfangsgerät SEG uh, from uh, FAB Funkwerk Köpenick. Köpenick was in East Berlin. And that company uh, does not exist anymore. After West Germany annexed East Germany, they dissolved that company in order to eliminate competition for the West German uh, electronic industry and which was too bad because as you will see these guys made very nice stuff this is the bottom we're gonna open it for you so you can have a look at the inside it's very nicely built it runs of 24 volts but there is all kind of power supplies for it there is a 12 to 24 volt converter for it there is an AC power supply and I'll show you that in a minute by loosening these four screws we can lift the cover and see what's on the inside. We have removed the case and um, we'll show you the uh, the rest of it. it. Smells very nice, it's too bad the video cannot capture the smell because it's a very good smell. We have two modules, the Signalaufbereitung, that is the uh, RF uh, unit and the Frequenzaufbereitung, which is the uh, synthesizer. Um, so this contains the receiver exciter, the other module is the synthesizer. Here we have a, uh, a switching uh, converter, power supply converter, from 24 volts to uh, 5 volts. Here you see the uh, channel switches, uh, it's built nice as you can see. Uh, these are high quality switches, not the cheap stuff. Here you see the um, here you see the uh, uh, tuner antenna tuner uh, together with the uh, power amplifier transmitter. Uh, this board here is the uh, pre driver and the driver generating the 20 watts, and this is basically the antenna tuner by by rotating the tuner, as you can see. We're basically uh, changing a ferrite rod inside this uh, coil assembly and by doing so we can tune the uh, whip antenna. The radio has a 50 ohm output as well as a uh, high impedance output for uh, mounting the whip antenna and the tuner is used for uh, both. It's used as a pre-selector for 50 ohm mode and as the actual antenna tuner when we are in uh, in the uh, whip usage. You see the other side. Like I said, pre driver and driver. And this is the synthesizer module. As you can see, this one has never been opened. I'm not going to do that now either. Here are more switches. Actually, these are the uh, synthesizer switches. And uh, we can change the fuse. And this is to, uh, it's a light pipe to illuminate the, uh, the frequency control, the numbers, the frequency dial. 
All right, let's uh, close it up again and uh, connect it to a power source. This is the AC power supply for the radio. As you can see, it can be set 220 volts or 127 volts. I have it now at 127 with a US plug, although originally it came with a, uh, a typical German uh, AC power plug. Um, there, basically, it's regulated as you can see with the transistors. Here is the uh, ID plate, also made by uh, VEB uh, uh, Funkwerk Kopenick in East, uh, East Berlin. Netscarate, that means power supply, net uh, AC power supply. Um, it can be mounted to the radio by tightening these screws, and we'll do that in a minute. Now there are other power supplies for this uh, uh, for this radio. There exists a battery uh, uh, box, battery compartment, uh, battery holder that screws in the back of the radio that holds uh, 24 D cells, either rechargeable or not. But this is the um, AC to uh, sorry the DC to DC converter, uh, a Gleichspannungswandler. That means DC to DC converter. It basically takes uh, 12 volts here, so you can run it from a, a car or something, and it converts that to a 24 volt regulated, and it does that with a whole bunch of transistors. Don't forget this radio was designed in the 70s. Manufactured all the way up to the 90s. This is a late model. You can actually see, is there a date code on there? Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's a date code, but they were made all the way up into the 90s before, uh, up to the moment where the uh, Berlin Wall came down. Uh, but uh, uh, the design obviously is, uh, is pretty spacey for a uh, DC to DC converter nowadays. These things are this big. But that was not the case in the 70s. But for the demo, we will run it with the uh, AC power supply. As we can uh, just plug it in and uh, get it going. We got it all hooked up. As you can see, the power supply is in the back. Radio is connected to an antenna. I have a bird watt meter so we can see what kind of power we actually get out of it. And this is the uh, microphone that came with it plugs in here and then there is a powered speaker that uh, uh, sits here can also be run directly from a, head, uh, a handset but a speaker is a little bit more convenient obviously we have it set for the uh, 40 meter band there is not a lot going on we're at the middle of the day and I got a tremendous interference on 40 meter but uh, I did find a station I guess I should have done the demo. Uh, I should have done the demo at night. I can always do that later. 80 meters is going to be completely quiet. We can go to 30 meters, but obviously there is no voice there. But we'll do that as well. As I said, this is the. Uh, this is the uh, FIFO, only active during receive. But most stations, uh, most ham stations, keep a kilohertz uh, uh, raster, and that's what we have here. Like I said, we have a lower sideband. What we can do is uh, put it on the dummy load, and then we try to uh, tune it. Uh, wait, the wrong button. This is how we tune. Alright. It tunes with a little bit lower power than what you would get when we modulate. Let's now modulate. One, two, three, four, five. This is uh, modulated. As you can see, we get exactly uh, 20 watts. And low power. Let's do low power. Is six watts. I'll uh, get the FT817 and let's listen to it.
and see how the modulation sounds. Alright, I got the SEG 15 on the dummy load right now. And I got the Yezu at the uh, at the outside antenna. As you see, that doesn't give much reception either. Let's see what we get. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're still on low power. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Testing the SEG 15 transmitting and the Yezu receiving. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. As you can hear, the modulation sounds very clipped. The radio has a built in uh, RS speech processor. And that gives a high average uh, output power. One, two, three, four, five. Almost uh, full power at uh, speed. Okay, let's see how the SEG15 sounds when we transmit with the ASU. Okay, we now got the ASU at the dummy load and the uh, SEG15 uh, uh, at the uh, at the out outside antenna. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Single side bend, lower side bend. Transmitting on the Yezu, receiving on the SEG15. As you can hear, the radio has an excellent uh, AGC uh, uh, function. The, um, the level of this very strong incoming signal is practically the same as what we hear from the weak stations, the audio level that is. There we go. You hear it come up. Very good AGC function in this radio. Actually, it's a good design all over. It is an up-converting design. The first IF is 30 mega, is 28 megahertz. It has uh, only one master oscillator, and everything is derived from that. Uh, the uh, sideband injection frequencies are uh, derived from that, as well as the actual uh, synthesized VFO. And considering this radio was designed in the 70s, that was quite a uh, quite a feat in those days. So those uh, uh, East Germans were not at all behind on the West in those days. Um, it actually has two mechanical filters, not Collins, obviously. The uh, mechanical filters were uh, made domestically and they work very well. There is one for upper sideband, one for lower sideband. The radio uses TTL chips that were basically copied from the Texas Instruments series. And those copies were... the copying was actually done in Russia and the manufacturing was done by Tesla in... Um, I think it was Yugoslavia, I'm not 100% sure. Might have been uh, Czechoslovakia. But uh, that's what's used in here. So if, if a chip burns out, you actually can just put in a, uh, a 74 LS series uh, chip and it will work just fine. It's exactly pin compatible, level compatible. The only difference is that the LS series uses a lot less power than the actual ones that are in here. But it's uh, pin compatible. And also the, uh, the analog chips that are used in here op amps and that kind of stuff. Those are all chips that were copied from the West, made by Tesla and by some company in Russia. And uh, like I said, finding spares for this radio is not a problem at all. Love this radio. It's excellent design. It's built well. It works very well. And here we are. This is a late model. I think it was built in 1989 or 1990, just before the wall came down. And here we are, 25 years later, and it works perfectly. Let's see what we can receive on the 10 meter, uh, sorry, on 30, uh, uh, 30 meter, 10 megahertz. And what we get there, maybe it's better than this noise that we have here. We got it set now for uh, the 
30 meter band 10.116 I heard a CW station earlier but apparently it's gone again just wanted to show you the tune-up procedure so we put it in low power tune as you can see the lights come on here as well and then it's just a matter of peaking this meter here as you can see that's with very low power to protect the uh, final. Now we're tuned. I can then tune with high power if I wanted to and then I can set it for a normal operation. One, two, three, four, five. We're still at 20 watts. I am uh, still monitoring on the uh, Yezu. One, two, three, four, five. As you can see the Yezu is at 10.11598 so there is 20 Hertz difference between the two radios. I don't know if that's because of the Yezu or because of the SEG15. In any case there is like I said a, um, a central uh, master oscillator which can be adjusted if really necessary but I think 20 Hertz I can live with that. Uh, let's uh, see quickly if there is anything going on. And some CW 10.114, so let's switch antennas and see what we got there. Alright. There we are. CW at uh, 30 meters. This is the VFO function. Like I said, it only works for receive. Transmit is fixed uh, 1 kilohertz. Found some broadcast at 937. 9370. It's one of those crackpot stations. Shortwave. But it serves a nice purpose for us here. It's obviously amplitude modulation, but we're receiving it uh, on the sideband. This is uh, upper sideband and lower sideband. And that's it. The uh, SEG15 Zende Empfangsgerät 15 made by uh, East Germany, former East Germany. Uh, here you can see, I don't know if it shows up, VEB Funkwerk Köpenick, RFT Berlin, actually they called it Berlin, not East Berlin, but it was East Berlin, and uh, 25 years old still works perfect, used by uh, East German secret police, Stasi, but also by the military. Thank you for watching this video.